It's a new book that explores the complex history of the city of Minneapolis. Yeah, former NPR News reporter Tom Weber is the author of Minneapolis, an urban biography, and we are really happy to have Tom join us on Skype this morning. Thanks so much for being here with us. So glad to be here. Good to see you. Yeah, so let's just get started with why you decided to write this book, because, you know, we always talk about Minneapolis in such wonderfully glowing terms, and there's a lot of great things about this city, but the, the history not there's a lot of not so great things and it is quite yeah. complex it is and it's you know we get to all these we're always on these lists for our good parks and our good beer scene and we're pet friendly and all of that and that's great but we're also on these lists for these huge inequities and disparities and inequities just across the city and so what I'm trying to do with the book here is to say, well, there's got to be a reason from our history that helps explain this. And there is. It, it's, it's that from before Minneapolis was Minneapolis, we were building a structure really solely for white people, for the people who came onto this Dakota land and uh, settled here, colonized here, and um, started what became Minneapolis. So instead of a book that just lists a few dark chapters from our history, a few negative things that happen. I'm really trying to to, to thread the needle there and, th and create a through line that says these aren't just one-off events. They're part of a larger history and narrative as to why the city is the way it is. Yeah, it's no accident, right? It's th through this kind of methodical planning to benefit white people. That's where we are now. Uh, this morning, That's the right. Minnesota Twins announced uh, that they've taken down the statue of Calvin Griffith, the man who brought the twins to Minnesota, uh, over extremely racist comments, and your book talks about those comments as well. That's right. It, it, my book actually mentions that the statue is still standing, so it's outdated as of this morning. But I don't know if you've I don't know if you've actually read the comments on air yet, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jason. But he was in Southern uh, Minnesota at a Lions Club, and and one of the Lions Club members says, "Well, why did you come to Minnesota?" And here's his quote: "I'll tell you why we came to Minnesota. This is Cal Griffith. It was when I found out you only. It was found out. It was when I found out you had fifteen thousand blacks here." Black people don't go to ball games, but they'll fill up a wrestling ring and put up such a chant it'll scare you to death. It's unbelievable. We came here because you've got good, hardworking white people here. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't really know what else to add to that, but that, to that add, is the reason. Right. There's not much else to add, Tom, but except that it is important for people to hear that and to hear that those words uh, came out of our leaders. Well, what's annoying, what's frustrating and infuriating, though, is that, you know, I, I saw a Nick Coleman column from the time that reported mm -hmm. on these words, mm -hmm. and it took it until happen. this week to say, hey, we shouldn't be celebrating this guy. You know, the, that was right at the end of the season that that happened. It was a bad season for the Twins, um, which they were known to have during the 70s, as you all know. Um, and uh, the NAACP called for a boycott. It ended up not happening. But remember, Hall of Famer Rod Carew was here in Minnesota playing for the Twins. And this incident, I don't think it was the only incident, if you ask Rod, but it was the icing on the cake. And he left for California thereafter. Right. We lost... You know, if you're just looking at this purely from a baseball standpoint, right. we lost our star player yeah. uh, because of because of what had happened here. Mm -hmm. And he, the other comments that he had made towards Rod Carew, as well, right. um, in there too. Uh, Tom, you know, this that's just one example here of what we're talking about. You learned a lot, a, a lot of different things uh, in this book. Can you just give us another couple, couple things? Well, the the other thing to uh, the big picture thing to remember is that. When Minneapolis hit its highest population ever in 1950, 5 0, mm -hmm. we were at 521,000 people. And when we did that, when we hit our high, it was 98.4% white in Minneapolis. As late as 1980, uh, in our lifetimes, as late as 1980, Minneapolis was 87% white. So you have to think about the city government, all of these institutions that were created as Minneapolis was growing up. Well, who were those institutions created for? Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess that 98.4% yeah. white was top of mind. So now as we have a city that's a little more like 60% white, still a majority white, but we are much more racially diverse, it's coming to a head to say, are these institutions built for black and brown people. Yeah. And we're finding a lot of examples where they're not.
The book is called Minneapolis, an Urban Biography. Tom Weber, congratulations. You. Your timing is impeccable. Uh, there certainly <laughs> is uh, right now, I hope, that people will go back and, and learn about the past to try to inform what we do going forward. Thanks, Tom. Thank you for having Thank me. You. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.